Today's theme is the long and winding road, mind the potholes and the lags. And what I'm referring specifically to here is the Federal Reserve's just released semi annual financial stability report, which led off with this very important quote. Several contacts highlighted the global nature of monetary policy tightening and the potential for larger than anticipated effects on financial conditions as central banks adjust policy synchronously, especially given long and variable policy lags. End of quote. So let's take a look at the table below. And let's look at what real GDP growth did in the two years ahead of each tightening cycle dating back to the late 1960s. And then look at what the economy does during the actual Fed tightening cycle as the pace feeds off the lags from the prior stimulus before the rate hikes kick in. And finally, look at how the economy performs in the two years after the Fed tightening cycle ends and how the policy lags kick in in the opposite direction. And this is what is staring us in the face for 2023. So what happens in the two years before the tightening cycle begins? Well, real GDP growth averages 3.5% at an annual rate. The median is 4%. And of course, during that interval, the Fed is still in accommodative mode. And then, during the tightening cycle, the economy is doing even better, and probably a reason why the Fed begins to step on the brakes at this time. Again, because Fed policy acts with a lag, and the economy at that point is still feeding off the prior easing cycle. And then, when the rate hiking cycle stops, as they all do, and the big growth slowdown and or recession begins as the lags begin to work in the other direction. What's interesting in this current cycle is that the economy, instead of speeding up during the Fed tightening cycle, has actually flattened on its back. And this speaks to the same fragility of this debt-laden economy that was experiencing before COVID-19 as the economy sputtered in the latter months, and in early 2020, before the pandemic even took hold. What is most important, as the Fed begins the process of slowing the rate hikes and then moving to the sidelines, is what history tells us happens in the aftermath. In the two years after the end of the tightening cycle, real GDP growth throttles back to an average annual rate of just 1.5%, which is what economists call stall speed. There's not been one instance when the economy failed to weaken in the two years after the tightening cycle ended compared to the period when the Fed was raising rates. And in seven of these 10 cycles, outright recessions did follow. This time around, any further slowing in the economy from its current flat on its back posture would necessarily involve. GDP contraction. This is just pure logic, and it's interesting to see how this must have factored into the Bank of Canada's recent downgrade of the U.S. growth forecast, implicitly assuming a renewed set of negative quarterly real GDP prints starting now and continuing into next year.